Former New Japan Pro Wrestling star Tama Tonga reportedly could be set to join the bloodline in WWE. We possibly have a debut date for Kazuchika Okada in All Elite Wrestling. We'll let you know what that is. Sting descends from the rafters for one more time last night on his final appearance on AEW Dynamite. An all-star scramble match has been announced for AEW Revolution this weekend. Will Ospreay is now officially All Elite and a full-time member of the AEW roster. He was on Dynamite last night. Hangman Adam Page confirms whether whether he's going to be challenging for the AEW World Championship at Revolution or not. Tony Khan opens up on an expanded AEW pay-per-view calendar this year in 2024. Is Seth Rollins going to be on tomorrow's episode of Friday Night Smackdown on Fox? Speaking of Smackdown, once it moves from Fox to the USA Network this year, could we possibly see the blue brand change nights from Friday to a different night of the week? Finally, we have the ratings for this week's edition of NXT on USA Network. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off talking about Tama Tonga, who reportedly not only is on his way to WWE, but also possibly on his way to the Bloodline. Now, a reported new WWE signing looks potentially set to join the Bloodline at some point after debuting for the company. After officially finishing up with New Japan Pro Wrestling at the promotion's new beginning event on January 24, Tama Tonga Tonga is reportedly WWE bound. Tonga, who spent 14 years in New Japan Pro Wrestling, previously worked alongside several current stars in the company during his time in Bullet Club, such as Finn Balor, AJ Styles, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson, to name a few. But those are not the only ties Tonga has to WWE with the 41-year-old considered an extended Anawahi family member through his father, Haku. Now, in an update to the situation, Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer has followed up with comments on when we could potentially see Tonga debut in the company and pointing out that, at some point, he may be involved with the Bloodline faction. Speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer said, quote, He's on his way, don't know the role, very likely at some point, could be part of the bloodline situation because he's considered family by all those guys. So if they need somebody new, it could be him. A year ago, he had been talking with WWE. I don't know a start date or anything, but he's done in New Japan. So in theory, he should be starting pretty soon. While Tonga's WWE starting date is not yet known, it does seem likely he could become a new X-Factor in the Bloodline saga, as despite not being a blood relative to Roman Reigns, The Rock, The Usos, and Solo Sokoa, Tonga is considered family, according to former MLW star Lance Anawahi, who confirmed as such in a new interview with WrestlingNews.co. He said, quote, Not by blood. We consider him every time I see Haku. He's my uncle. Lot of respect for. I believe it's just more like the island culture culture. We're all from the South Pacific, so the Islanders just stick together, man. It's just one breed. But yeah, always, I've seen Tamatonga growing up. I hung out with him while I was out in Japan. Whenever our schedules blessed us to meet up and have dinner, there's always love there. I don't know if it's true or not. I know I've been reading on the internet that Tamatonga has signed. If he did, good for him, because I think it's well-deserved and about time. While many would anticipate Tonga would add further strength to the Bloodline faction, if Anawahi had his way, he would rather pair Tonga up with Jey Uso on Raw in order to combat Jimmy Uso and Solo's co on SmackDown. He said, quote, Fantasy booking, I would say Raw. Raw would be my pick, especially because Jay's there. Jay's kind of all alone. If we do consider him, we do consider Tama as family. So I think Jay could do with some help over there, especially when Solo and Jimmy creeping over to Raw and attacking Jay. So Tamatonga could be set to join up with the Bloodline. Do you think that would be the right move? Or would you rather see him join up with his former Bullet Club stablemates in terms of Gallows and Anson? Let me know your thoughts about that as well. Now, I guess possible spoilers ahead. So if you want to skip forward and not know when Kazuchika Okada reportedly is set to debut of All Elite Wrestling, skip ahead. We'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. One, let's talk about the Rainmaker in All Elite Wrestling because we've got a big update on when Okada reportedly is set to make his official AEW debut. Not that he hasn't appeared on AEW programming previously, of course, because AEW is landing a huge free agent in Kazuchika Okada. Now, Okada's New Japan Pro Wrestling deal expired at the end of January. 
making him a free agent. AEW had long maintained interest in him joining the company. By early February, Fightful Select, Sean Ross Sapp had reported that Okada was expected to go to All Elite Wrestling and would be debuting once he finished up his freelance obligations with New Japan. Fightful also noted that the first half of March was expected to be a huge one for AEW. Mercedes Monet is planned for a debut on March 13 at the Big Business Dynamite Special. Will Ospreay has now debuted as a full-time wrestler for AEW. He's going to be debuting as a full-time wrestler in ring, of course, at Revolution this coming weekend. And the company is poised for many visual changes. And Sting's retirement is going down as well this weekend too. In addition to that, Fightful Select are reporting that they have been told that the company has been hoping and at least tentatively is planning for Kazuchika Okada to be in the fold by the March 6th episode of AEW Dynamite on TBS. Once again, that's the March 6th episode of Dynamite. Now, Tony Khan noted on today's AEW Revolution media call that there's something he's very excited about coming up in Atlanta for next week's Dynamite. Fightful have heard of plenty of discussion that Okada will officially debut there, but have heard from numerous sources that the hope as of mid-February was for Okada to appear by the company then. So the suggestion is possibly next week's Dynamite or at least very, very soon. What are your thoughts on the Rainmaker going to AEW? And what would you do with Okada in AEW? Who would you have him feud with? Where would you slot him in? Let me know your thoughts about that as well. Now, speaking of Dynamite last night, we saw possibly for the last time ever Sting descending from the rafters on AEW Dynamite. The Young Bucks got quite the surprise on AEW Dynamite after spending the majority of Wednesday's broadcast looking for Sting on what was the icon's final appearance on the show ahead of his final match ever on Sunday at AEW Revolution. Matthew and Nicholas Jackson entered the arena at the start of the show. Armed with baseball bats, they attempted to find Sting in his locker room to no avail. So they came out to the ring at the end of the night and heckled some fans in Sting masks at ringside, one of whom turned out to be Darby Allen. The Young Bucks beat up on Allen with the, uh, their baseball bats in the ring, then called out Ric Flair. Of course, Flair was seen heading into the Bucks' locker room last week on Dynamite, seemingly turning on his longtime friend. When the Bucks wanted Flair to hit Darby with one of the bats, Flair turned on them with a thumb to the eye and a cheap shot. The Bucks then started to beat up on Flair, hitting him with a low blow and beating him down. It was then that Sting's music hit and the Bucks headed up the ramp to wait for him on the stage. However, Sting never appeared in the traditional way from the back. He instead descended from the rafters, armed with his own baseball bat to come to Flair and Darby's rescue. Darby Allen hit the Bucks with a coffin drop and Sting hit Nicholas with a scorpion death drop to end the show and Sting's final dynamite. Darby and Sting, of course, put their AEW World Tag Team Championships on the line against the Young Bucks at AEW Revolution, of course. This is the first time that Sting has descended from the rafters inside a major arena, one would think since his days in WCW when he used to regularly do it on Nitro during his feud with the likes of the NWO and more. What did you make of Sting descending from the rafters last night on TBS once again? Now, speaking of AEW and Revolution, this weekend we've got a new match that's been announced featuring Chris Jericho. Following a hard-fought AEW Dynamite victory over Atlantis Jr., a CMLL regular and the son of Atlantis Sr., who partnered with, wrestled against and mentored a young Chris Jericho in Mexico 30 years ago, the Ocho claimed a spot in the newly announced All-Star Scramble match at AEW Revolution on Sunday. The Scramble, now set to replace what was being dubbed as Meat Madness between Wardlow, Powerhouse Hobbs and Lance Archer due to multiple injuries, as per Tony Khan on X, will feature Jericho, Hook, Brian Cage, two opponents to be determined, and the aforementioned Wardlow, Hobbs and Archer, creating some confusion as to the reason for the switcheroo in the first place however it has since been reported that names like Miro and others were originally scheduled for the bout however due to for whatever reason they're no longer available. Khan's tweet initially said in part, quote, with multiple wrestlers slated for AEW Revolution's Meat Madness, out injured, plus shelved by AEW doctors, I'm temporarily freezing the bouts until they're clear. Um, as per Fightful, the final two spots will be determined by two Rampage matches, which will be Magnus versus Matt Seidel and Brian Keith versus Dante Martin versus Penta El Zero Miedo. Jericho, who was dubbed with his old school Corazon de Leon moniker, came out to that classic entrance music for the match, had perhaps more on his plate than he could chew in Atlantis Jr., whose high-flying prowess and athleticism gave him the upper hand on occasion throughout the bout. The upset was not to be, however, as Atlantis Sr. threw in the 
towel for his boy in the walls of Jericho to ice the win for the finisher's namesake. Jericho, who utilized dastardly tactics earlier on, showed respect for both father and son Atlantis, shaking their hands and hugging repeatedly and raising both of their arms in celebration. So that match is taking place this coming Sunday at AW Revolution. Now, we saw Will Ospreay for the first time since officially putting pen to paper on his AW contract. Of course, he did technically put pen to paper back at Full Gear last year. But Will Ospreay is officially All Elite and only All Elite after finishing his obligations with New Japan Pro Wrestling and heading to America to join Tony Khan's uh, company full time. Ospreay made his first full time appearance on AW Dynamite in an in ring segment with Tony Schiavone after initially signing his AW contract at Full Gear in November. He made sure to make it known to the the fans that this isn't his first rodeo in AW as he defeated Orange Cassidy at Forbidden Door 2022 and Kenny Omega at 2023's edition of the pay-per-view of the same name and also Chris Jericho at All In at Wembley Stadium last year. As Osprey was telling the crowd he was ready to pick up where he left off, he was interrupted by the Callis family. He hugged it out with Don Callis and Will Hobbs in a reunion but remained weary of Konosuke Takeshita who he'll be facing this Sunday at AW Revolution. Callis explained just how he pits two family members against each other and said Takeshita and Osprey will have the match of the decade at Revolution and the real winner of the match will be the Don Callis family as a whole. He implored the competitors to shake hands, which they did in a show of sportsmanship. Callis, Hobbs and Takeshita left the ring with no further conflict ahead of Revolution. Now, we opened the show last night on AEW Revolution with Hangman Adam Page and some were wondering if he was even going to be competing this weekend for the AEW World Championship. Ahead of Sunday's triple threat match for the AW World title at Revolution, both Swerve Strickland and Hangman Adam Page scheduled to challenge Samoa Joe. AW fans were looking forward to hearing from Page last night on Dynamite to find out whether or not he was actually compete after seemingly suffering an ankle injury last week. They heard from him in short order as he proclaimed that he would not be fit to compete. And then Strickland heard from him even more strongly with a crutch he hobbled on as it cracked across his back and then over his head before Page declared that he would not only compete but he would be walking out of Revolution with the championship. As the violence unfolded, Joe looked on in approval, grinning all the while, as it certainly behooves the champion in any triple threat to have his adversaries out for each other's blood. And this was quite the turn of events for the champion, since it was Joe himself who appeared to have potentially taken Page out on last week's Dynamite. Attempting a muscle buster, Page rolled out of the champion's finisher, seemingly rolling an ankle or tweaking a knee before he exited the ring and eventually limped up the ramp. It turns out now Paige hobbled out from the back, crutch in hand with the crowd uh, had in their minds made up before he even uttered a word. Of course, as I mentioned, the fix was in and Paige hammered an unsuspecting Strickland from behind. The crowd finally turned on the heel Paige in full force, setting the stage for an against all odds scenario for Swerve with the Greensboro crowd surely being behind wholeheartedly come Sunday. Now, this is quite an interesting story when it comes to pay-per-view events in AEW this year because we could be getting quite a few more. According to Tony Khan on today's AEW, AEW Revolution Media Call, Tony Khan has said that he could potentially see 9 to 10 AEW pay-per-views in 2024. In fact, we may have a closer look already at one of them. Now, whenever a new trademark gets filed, fans around the world begin to speculate what it could be in relation to. One recent trademark filed for AEW caught the attention of many, and it seems it could be related to an upcoming event. AEW recently filed a trademark claim for Dynasty, according to Fightful Select. The trademark is connected to either a pay-per-view or special event the company is planning. Fightful Select learned via Warner Brothers Discovery sources that the event is targeted for the spring, which is also the word going around with Within AEW, as some have heard of a potential show happening in April. The report stated that only a possible time frame has been heard within Warner Brothers Discovery and that a potential location hasn't been confirmed. At the time of this recording, only one AEW event has been confirmed for the month of April, that being the dual taping of AEW Dynamite and AEW Collision on April 3rd in Worcester, Massachusetts, where the latter of the two events will air at the same time as night one of WrestleMania 40. Following the event on April 3rd, the next event confirmed by AEW is the dual taping of Dynamite and AW Rampage on May 1st in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, which was also recently rescheduled to May 1st um, from April 10. So certainly the schedule looks quite interesting right now. Now, AW, as I mentioned, has gradually added more pay-per-views to their yearly schedule over the past two years, with the Forbidden Door event of New Japan Pro Wrestling becoming a regular event in 2022, joining AW's four annual pay-per-views consisting of Revolution, Double or Nothing, All Out, and Full Gear. 
Last year, three more events were added to the schedule in the form of AEW's All In at Wembley Stadium, October's Wrestle Dream, and December's World End pay per view as well, meaning that if a pay per view was to take place in April, it would be the first time in AEW history that an event of its kind would take place in that month. So stay tuned certainly for that. Now let's talk about SmackDown a little bit because tomorrow we could see Seth Rollins on the blue brand. Yes, this is certainly very interesting stuff, particularly as we get closer to WrestleMania. Even if he's been more of a character actor than a leading man, Seth Rollins has been heavily involved in the feud between Cody Rhodes and the Bloodline, telling his former rival Rhodes that he has his back as Rhodes not only looks to unseat Roman Reigns for the undisputed WWE Universal title, but looks to challenge The Rock. With The Rock scheduled to appear once again on Friday's episode of SmackDown, it appears Rollins is again ready to put his money where his mouth is. PW Insider is reporting that Seth Rollins is currently scheduled to appear on SmackDown tomorrow. While his plans for the show aren't confirmed, the expectation is he will be involved in The Rock's appearance. Rollins and The Rock's presence would suggest that Rhodes himself will also be at SmackDown, though he's not been confirmed for the show as of this recording. The Rock's appearance, his second in two weeks on SmackDown, is expected to revolve around him answering a challenge set forth by Rhodes this past Saturday at Elimination Chamber in Perth, Australia. Though the challenge was made for a Rhodes vs Rock singles match, it's expected by many that the bout will be changed to a tag team match involving Rollins and Reigns, with reports suggesting the match has been in the work for at least the last several weeks. While Rollins has become involved in the Rhodes slash Bloodline saga, he still has his own issues to deal with regarding his World Heavyweight Championship. Rollins is currently scheduled to defend his championship at WrestleMania against Drew McIntyre following McIntyre winning a title shot in the men's elimination chamber match at the titular premium live events last weekend. Now sticking with SmackDown of course it's headed to the USA Network back to the network it moved to uh, move from to Fox back in 2019 but the question is is it still going to be Friday Night SmackDown or is it going to be something else? Now beginning in October of this year WWE's brand new media rights deals begin to kick in. SmackDown moves to the USA Network, NXT moves to the CW Network, and finally Monday Night Raw will be beginning a new era for WWE on Netflix in January 2025. As far as that little bridge gap between October 2024 and January 2025 for Raw, we still don't really know what's going to happen there, but WWE reportedly is working on it. With WWE's programming shifting towards the end of the year, one persistent question amongst fans is whether these networks will also decide to change when each show is broadcast. This is something that has been discussed openly by both WWE President Nick Khan and Endeavor slash TKO CEO Ari Emanuel in the past, with the sentiment being that no individual show is locked into any particular night of the week. Now in a new update pertaining to SmackDown in particular, Dave Meltzer has shared some insight into the current thought process behind the blue brand's future. Speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio, Meltzer revealed that as of now, the current plan is for SmackDown to remain on its usual Friday night time slot. He said, quote, the last time I talked with somebody with WWE on that discussion, they told me outright that nothing's official. The stations are going to have all the work to have to work this all out whenever. But the plan was, as of right now, right now was, I would say, about a month ago, is that SmackDown would be Friday. I don't know why you would do that. If you're USA, it feels utterly stupid to do SmackDown on Friday. But that was the plan as of a month ago, was for SmackDown to stay on Friday and be called Friday Night SmackDown. Now, unlike the new TV deals for SmackDown and NXT, which both begin in October of this year, Raw's move to Netflix doesn't begin until January 2025, leaving, as I mentioned, this three-month gap where the flagship WWE show currently doesn't have a network. At the recent TKO Q4 earnings call, TKO CFO Andrew Schleimer addressed this issue and what the company's plans are during this gap, suggesting that talks are ongoing and an announcement could be coming regarding that pretty soon. And finally, let's talk about the ratings for this week's episode of NXT. Of course, it was a big one featuring the return of Sean Spears, but still, NXT did struggle this week. According to Wrestlenomics, this week's edition of NXT's developmental third brand was watched by 570,000 people overall, the lowest overall viewership since July 4th of last year, while the 18-49 to 49 demographic showed up to the tune of a 0.16 rating, which is also the lowest since August 29 of last year as well. 
The overall rating was down 7% from last week, while the 18 to 49 demographic dropped 11%. Now, in terms of the quarter hour rating, once again, they come courtesy of WrestleNomics. Shout out to them and be sure to subscribe to their Patreon channel. The highest rated segment of the night was the promo battle between the various tag teams of NXT, who quarreled over who should face Bron Breaker and Baron Corbin for the NXT tag team titles. The lowest rated segment of the show was the contract signing between NXT champion Ilya Dragunov and Carmelo Hayes, which took place in the overall with fans seemingly tuning out following the main event match between Charlie Dempsey and Noam Dar. This week's NXT was the first live episode of the last week's taped edition. It not only featured the aforementioned contract signing, but the crowning of a new NXT Heritage Champion in Charlie Dempsey, but also the return to WWE of Sean Spears, formerly known as Ty Dillinger, who attacked Ridge Holland during one of the show's higher-rated segments. This past week's show was the final NXT before next week's Roadblock Special, which will feature the NXT Championship match between Hayes and Dragunov, of course, as well. But there you go, guys. That's the latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.